Welcome for Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to fetch your recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we are continuing along with my Cakewalk series and talking about track management. So track management is extremely important when it comes to any session, but especially larger sessions. So I'm going to go over four points today, and I hope these four points help you better organize your sessions, and especially when you have to open a session a year or two down the road, this video is going to make all the difference for you. So you're definitely going to want to follow these steps and learn about what I have to say. So before we get to this video, I do want to mention that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates, and I give 20% off to new customers. All you got to do is sign up for my email list. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk by BandLab, and today we're talking about track management. And I can't emphasize how important track management is to your sessions. It's going to save you a lot of time, and if you're doing this for an income, it's going to save you a lot of money. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over four different things that I think are most important when it comes to track management within Cakewalk or really any DAW. So the first is going to be track colors, coordinating your colors per instrument. Second is going to be grouping tracks. Third is going to be actually routing tracks as a group to auxes or what Cakewalk likes to call them patch points. And then lastly, we're going to talk about track folders. And those are the four things that I think are going to help you most keep your sessions organized. And if you have to open one a year or two later, you're going to know exactly where everything is at. So with that being said, let's get into the first thing, which is track colors. All right, so talking about track colors. So what I like to do for this is I like to have all of my instruments that are one type of instrument be the same color. Now, this is how I do it, and you don't necessarily have to do it this way, and there's some other alternatives that work well. But for example here, all of my drums, they're all yellow here. And if I had like a tambourine or shaker, I would also make it yellow and put it in here. But you may not want to do that. You may want to have, you know, that be its own group. Or if you feel that is part of the drums, but it's obviously different, you can make it a different shade of that color using. So I can make it maybe like a darker yellow if I want. So that's kind of a different way you can go about doing it. So for my drums, I do yellow. For my bass, I do purple. And then for my virtual instruments here, I do this kind of brownish color. And that was carried over from Pro Tools because their instrument tracks are around this color. My vocals, I do blue. And again, if you want to do your backing vocals, maybe a different shade of blue, you can do that. And then down here, these are the patch point tracks or aux tracks. Um, and these are this kind of forest of green color. And again, that was also carried over from Pro Tools. So that is how I color my tracks. Uh, you can use my scheme or you can come up with your own. Doesn't matter to me. So to actually set a color on a track, all you have to do is go over to the little box to the left of each track here, click it once. And then you get all these options in here and you can hit the other button and you get the whole entire color wheel. So you can uh, color your track to your heart's content, to be honest, any color you want. So that's how I do track colors. So let's move on to the next thing, which is going to be grouping tracks. All right, so for grouping tracks, this is very beneficial because maybe you have three instruments that technically make up one instrument. And what I mean by that is I have three kick drums here and I have two snare drums here. So these three kick drums together basically create my one kick sound. And these two snares together here create my one snare sound. So if we are moving these faders here, we don't wanna to have to move one at a time. We want them to be linked together. So essentially grouped. So all you gotta do is actually just click on the first track you wanna group here. So if we're gonna group all the kicks, I'm gonna click on the two down here and that's gonna highlight it. And then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click on the last kick here. And then now they're all highlighted. And if I simply right click on one of the faders here, it opens up this window here. And then you can see I have an option for group and then I can just simply pick a color. So now you see that they're all lit up in red and that means they're all part of the red group and you can raise and lower them together like that. 
So I recommend doing this on any instrument you have that have multiple instruments that make up that one instrument. <laughs> so like I said, kick and snare are great examples for that. And you can also, you know, get something like a tom mix. So I've got a high tom, mid tom, low tom, and four tom here. I can get a mix together of these and then group them. So then if I move them, you know, I'll move them together. So that is grouping tracks. So let's move on to our next thing, which is going to be taking groups of tracks and sending them to a patch point track or aux track. All right, so for using patch points, this is gonna be strictly related to track management here. There's other stuff you could do with them, but this is gonna continue along with our grouping idea here. So we group the kick faders so that, you know, we can raise and lower the volume together. And I should mention that we'll have also grouped the mutes and stuff like that. Um, do we actually wanna process each kick in here individually? Do we wanna put, you know, compression on each one, EQ on each one? Do we wanna like, you know, mess with them differently? Most situations, no. So what we wanna do is we want to actually just send all of these to one track and then that one track we can actually do all of our processing on. So we would just wanna create a nice blend between our three kicks here to where we think it sounds pretty good and just need some minor enhancements. And then we'll do all of our compression EQ and whatever we're gonna to add to it on our aux track or patch point track. So all we need to do is actually change our output here on these three. So starting at the first one here, We'll go down to the very bottom and we'll go to new patch point. It's now patch point nine and we're gonna change the name of that in a second. So we wanna route this one also to patch point nine and then this one also to patch point nine. And then if we just right click here, we can insert an audio track and we'll actually just drag this down to below it here and we'll expand it. So all we need to do on this audio track we created is change the input. So where it says none here, you have your I, that's your input, hit the down arrow, and then go to patch point nine here. And then we're gonna wanna do a stereo track here. And now it's actually patch point nine. And we will call this kick bus. And then we can also rename patch point nine if we don't like it name that. So if we go here, and then we go to rename patch point. We can call this kick bus. There, so now these are all routed to the kick bus. So what that allows for us to do now is we can actually do all of our processing on this track and that it makes it that much more simple. So that is it for routing to patch points regarding track management. So let's go to our last point for today, which is actually going to be track folders. So track folders to me are the best way to organize your session and especially if you have a large session, this is going to give you a lot more real estate on your screen. So if I want to create a drum track folder, I can simply click on my top drum here. I can hold shift on my keyboard, go down to my last drum, which is the drum bus. Now they're all highlighted. Right click on any of the numbers here. You'll see a bunch of options in here. Simply go to move to folder and then go to new track folder. So there you go. We have all of our drums in one folder up here. We can call this, uh, I don't know, let's call it drum folder. How's that sound? And you'll see that everything is actually synced. So if I go to the mute button here, it's gonna mute all of them. If I go to the solo button here, it will solo all of them. And I can also do group edits in here, which is fantastic. So if I want to shorten a song per se, maybe it's too long, I can wipe out a portion of the song all at one time working within these uh, track folders. So if I wanna close this here, I simply hit the dash. If I wanna expand it, I hit the plus. So just to show you how much real estate we can save, I'm actually gonna close this here. And then we're actually gonna group all of our virtual instruments here. So we'll make a group for them. We'll call this, virtual. we'll just call it virtual instrument. How's that? V instruments, okay, we'll close that. And we'll do all the vocals here new track folder call this vocals close that i uh, typically my uh, aux tracks slash patch point tracks out in the open but as you can see look at all the real estate that we have saved now 
this is great. So it could be like, oh, well, the song sounds great, but I need to make a tweak to the drums. Okay, all I could do is hit the plus button here, and there's my drums. So that is probably the best way, as you guys can see, to um, you know, save space on your screen and to organize your sessions. And I, I will tell you, if you open a session a year or two later and you have track folders in there, um, it's going to make your life so much easier. <laughs> so those are my four things that I think are the most important to track management. Again, just recapping uh, the first one being track colors, next being grouping tracks. Uh, after that, uh, taking your groups of tracks and send them to patch points slash aux tracks. And then lastly, just track folders. So I hope you guys learned something from this session. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.